Good morning and welcome to Saturday Morning Prayer. A sad morning in that we've discovered that God's beautiful children, again from the Coptic Church, have been the target of more terrorist acts. Up to 23 people have been killed and 25 injured in a gun attack on a bus taking the Coptic Christians in Minya governorate in southern Egypt. They were being taken to the monastery of Saint Samuel, a Coptic Orthodox monastery in the Kalamun mountain. And it breaks your heart to know that God-fearing children destroyed yet again by Is Islamists, fundamentalists, who disapprove of Coptic Christians. How tragic, how heartbreaking. So we remember today and we dedicate our morning prayer for God's children, our brothers and sisters, on their way to praise God at St. Samuel's Coptic Monastery. So we light this light and we call on our Father, Mother God, the God of many names and none, who loves each and every one of us, even the terrorists. But we pray, we pray for the victims and their families and for the Coptic Christian Church, a beautiful church and really devout people who have a great love of God and yet are paying the price for their love of God in Egypt. So we say, Father, Mother, God, thank you for your seal of protection on these beautiful people and for the terrorists who opened gunfire on the men, women and children, martyrs for God. We pray for their protection today of those who've survived and who are living in fear of more reprisals. So now we call on the Spirit of God to protect the whole family of God and that our humble prayer here this morning, we know it won't go unanswered because God hears every prayer. And we pray to the Archangel Michael that his sword of righteousness will protect the children of God right now. So let us be still as we bring these beautiful people, our brothers and sisters, to the throne of our loving God. My Lord and my God, though I do not understand why people do what they do, why they would choose to kill another, but we pray for all concerned. And we just give you this painful tragedy yet again. And we leave it with you, Lord God. And we ask for your guidance, your protection and your strength today. Amen. And our prologue of our brother and sister's scenes of Mount Sinai reads, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Saturday morning, we commune with our earthly mother and our heavenly mother. For the earthly mother and our heavenly mother and I are one. For they both give us the food, the food from the earth and the food from God, to enrich our lives in service to God's love. So let us now connect with our earthly mother and our heavenly mother and just be guided by their love. Amen. And our hymn this morning I've not forgotten. Forgive me for fiddling with these glasses. They're only temporary until I can get new ones next week. Well, 
tested for a new pair next week, thanks to our brother Sid, who went off with my new glasses and had a good chew. We loved him. Now, the hymn this morning is hymn 34, Far Too Long by Fear Divided. Oh no, I read that last night. No, yesterday morning. Oh, hymn 35, Find a Stillness. Find a stillness, hold a stillness, and let the stillness carry me. Find the silence, hold the silence, let the silence carry me. In the spirit, by the spirit, with the spirit given power, I will find true harmony. Seek the essence, hold the essence, let the essence carry me. Let me flower, help me flower, watch me flower, carry me. In the spirit, by the spirit, with the spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. That's by Carl G. Seberg, who lived 1922 to 1998. A rather beautiful hymn. So now let us come to our first reading where we will be guided by spirit. To speak to us the words of the Father, Mother, God. And we come to Psalms now, and I'm going to open it at random, trusting. Psalm 72. O God of love, grant to your sons and servants the grace to represent you effectively in our discordant world. Give us the courage to put our lives on the line in communicating life and truth to all your creatures wherever they may be found. Where there is injustice, may we diagnose its cause and discover its cure. Where there is bigotry, teach us how to love and how to encourage others to love. Where there is poverty, help us to share the wealth that has come from your hand. Where there is war and violence, may we be peacemakers that lead men and women to your eternal peace. Help us, O oh God, to become what you have destined and empowered us to become. Where there is darkness, may we become the rays of your sun that banish the gloom of lonely lives. And where there is drought, let us be like fresh showers that turn barren deserts into green meadows. Where there is ugliness and distortion, enable us to portray the beauty and order of your will and purposes. Great God, you are in our world. Your majesty is reflected in your creation about us. But there are multitudes who do not feel your concern or acknowledge your love. It is because your servants have failed to carry out your command and commission that we have yet to sense the significance of our salvation and the purpose of our mission. Forbid, O God, that we be deaf to the cries of the poor and indifferent to those who have needs. May we identify with those who are oppressed and help to bear the burdens of those who suffer about us. May we hear your voice of concern and feel your loving touch through your servants who are in this world, to manifest you to men about them. The glory is yours, O God, and we shall praise your name and celebrate your cause together. That's an upbeat psalm, and they're words that I need to read this morning because after reading about and hearing about the awful travesty of the killings and those many injured in the Coptic Church, I thought, oh dear Lord, where are we going wrong? And then of course with Manchester, with so many being killed and 70 odd now still seriously injured in hospital. We take heart because we are in the presence of God and Jesus does tell us, 
Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. But Jesus also says, my ways are not your ways. So what is God saying to your heart this morning? Maybe you're going through a life crisis of doubt, of faith. Maybe you're struggling to discern what God is saying to you through all the catastrophes that have befallen you. All we can do is to name, bless and give it to God and to trust that everything is happening for a reason. And I know that from my own personal spiritual journey where one door closes, another one always opens. And the one that opens is the one that's opened by God, not by our ego. So when we feel that our world is coming apart because of travesty, sadness, bad news, or maybe we're in a situation where our livelihood's at stake, and we feel as if we're just not coping with this. The moment we surrender this to God is the moment when God can perform a miracle. Because God uses disappointment today for his appointment tomorrow. But are we willing to trust in God? Are we willing to give God the benefit of the doubt? That's faith. That's the gift of faith. So we mustn't have unrealistic expectations that we're going to go through every day honky-dory, where nothing goes wrong. Like the other day where my glasses, <laughs> my best pair of reading glasses that cost the community over 500 pounds three, four years ago was suddenly being brought into the lounge minus its lenses and, and Brother Sid having a great time chewing them and I'm thinking, oh my God, what do I do with this? What with my denture being bitten and cracked, the glass has been chewed, it's been a very expensive week, but out of it all, the Lord does provide, as he's proven to me. But what is Jesus saying to our hearts this morning? Let us, I'm being guided to go to the little book, Jesus Calling, and to open it at random, and to let Jesus speak to our heart. Ah, oh, entrust your loved ones to me. Release them into my protective care. They are much safe safer with me than in your clinging hands. If you let a loved one become an idol in your heart, you endanger that one as well as yourself. Remember the extreme measures I used with Abraham and Isaac. I took Isaac to the very point of death to free Abraham from sun worship. Both Abraham and Isaac suffered terribly because of the father's undisciplined emotions. I detest idolatry, even in the form of parental love. When you release loved ones to me, you are free to cling to my hand. As you entrust others into my care, I am free to shower blessings on them. My presence will go with them wherever they go, and I will give them rest. The same presence stays with you as you relax and place your trust in me. Watch to see what I will do. And that can be applied to disappointing news. It can be applied to anything. But as Jesus said, this same presence stays with you as you relax and place your trust in me. Watch to see what I will do, even though the walls are caving in and maybe the ground under our feet is disappearing 
and we're hanging on for dear life. Trust. Trust. And the same could be applied to a member of our family that we love who's unwell and suffering. Trust. So we come to this table of love and we bring all of God's children who are struggling at this hour, especially the Coptic Christian community in northern Egypt, in Cairo and Alexandria. We bring them before our Father, Mother God, and we ask God's blessing on them and protection today from future reprisals from terrorists. We pray for the innocent children that have been killed by these Islamist terrorists. We pray for unity and peace within every religion, that all world religions will become transparent and hide nothing from the main community. Give us a, an acceptance, dear Lord, and a tolerance and respect for all faiths, and not to sit in judgment as many do. We pray for your children, dear God, who've never even heard of you, who don't even know that you exist, because their God is the God of materialism. But today we pray for those who've surrendered their heart to God and who are being tested, truly tested, we ask you to bless them. We pray this morning for those of you who've joined us for prayer here, for dear Sister Sue, and we've had a request that we remember her dear friend Paul and his son Ben. Ben, bless him. He struggles with a mental health issue and he's a good man, he's a child of God and he has a right to God's healing touch today. So we pray for dear Ben. And we pray for all who are living with a mental health issue. We pray this morning for the members of our community who are being tested for our dear sister Heather, who recently was given a diagnosis that she's got leukemia. For dear Sarah in Hebden Bridge, who's now got metastases as bone secondaries in her spine and in her pelvis. And we pray for the many today who are struggling with a cancer defining illness. We pray for the whole family of God, regardless of their color, their creed, their gender orientation, or their lifestyle choices. We bring each and every one of them now to the Lord God, and we ask God's blessing on all who may be hurting at this hour. We pray today for our dear sister Nancy, who is one of our trainee monastics who takes her vows in July on the feast, July, August, the feast of St. Clair. For our dear sister Jackie and sister Jen, who's been unwell of late. We pray this morning for dear brother Matthew and his family in Texas, for brother Liam in London, for brother Brian, our Franciscan trucker, who's had his fair share, more than his fair share of disappointments with his truck, and now is in a situation where he's stranded and where other problems are developing as the hour passes with his truck. We pray today for Brother Murray, for Brother Paul, for Brother Rob, for our dear sister Laura, for dear sister Sue, no, for Sister um, Olivia, the cough is still getting her down. We pray for, oh, so many who've asked for prayer. For Sister Corazon de los Santos. We pray for dear Maggie in London, who's still grieving her son. 
We pray for all our Facebook friends on our closed Facebook page. And we bring all our friends on social media, not forgetting dear brother Skip, who truly is an amazing man, who supports us through thick and thin. And we pray a prayer of gratitude to all God's children who hear the word of God, who don't process it, but who act upon it, giving glory to God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray for him today, as we pray for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat, and for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England, and for all the men and women who've dedicated their lives to God, to Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, for unity and peace. And now we pray silently for our own requests as we bring them into the presence of God. So let us now be still. Oh, Father, Mother, God, thank you for your many gifts that we receive at times take for granted. And with Sister Sue, we join our prayers with yours, Brother Sean, for me. Thank you. It was a rough day yesterday having to go and see the consultant for this rare book that's affecting my right lung. From all those retreats I ran in Egypt, I'm now paying the price. But we bless that bunk and we bless the side effects of the drugs I've been on. And we bless the lethargy, the tiredness and the weariness. And we say, Lord, we thank you for being in control of our lives. And we give you glory, Lord, for the opportunities that you give us each day to come into your presence and to say, Lord, we love you, we glorify you, and we celebrate your divinity with all who are willing and prepared to join us for prayer. So we give thanks to God. In every situation, we give thanks to God. So now, in giving thanks to God, we pray the beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here today our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us the times when we thought we knew better than you when we allowed our head to kick in and interfere with your words of love. Forgive us the times when we failed in charity, in thought, word or deed. Lead us not astray, but protect us from those negative forces that seek to alienate us from your love. Forces of evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for our closing prayer, I'm going to read to you, if I may, the beautiful blessing called Banach, which is Gaelic for blessing, by the late Father John O'Donoghue. And I would like to dedicate it to all of you. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green and azure blue, come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. 
when the canvas frays in the curragh of thought and the stain of ocean blackens beneath you, may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours, may the clarity of light be yours, may the fluency of the ocean be yours, may the protection of the ancestors be yours, and so may a slow wind at wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. Amen. And Sister Sue's put something there. Oh, thank you, dear Sue. You're a true friend. And as we hold this light, we hold it in the presence of God. And though our hearts are heavy at the sadness at the destruction of human life, especially little children by terrorists. We say, Lord God, thank you for your protection this day on all the children of God, but especially upon the Coptic Christians. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bona mom shanti. Solo di carita, salam alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are a child of God, that you are a co creator of the divine, and that your life matters to God. So if it's your bedtime, sleep well, and if it's your day, oh, brother, son, enjoy. Enjoy this beautiful day and get out into the Cathedral of God and enjoy being with the wildlife and the beautiful trees till we meet again. Peace.